everyone, it's Lucy and today I am so excited because I am getting to film in an olive young. I have been lucky enough to get in a little bit early before they open into one of the Hongdae stores so that I can run around and show you everything without getting in anyone's way. Olive Young is Korea's largest beauty retailer with more than 1,200 stores across Korea. And today I'm going to take you with me as we explore this K-beauty institution, looking at some of the most popular skincare and makeup products, as well as a few other things they happen to have in store. Now we were lucky enough to get permission to film in Olive Young before the store opened, and so while I initially planned to talk you through, they unfortunately did still have some copyright music playing. So you're just gonna have to take my enthusiastic voiceover instead. And it's a little bit of a shame because I can tell you the K-pop playlist was banging. <laughs> So without further ado, let's go shopping at Olive Young. Starting off with skincare, and first up, we'll be visiting the sponsor of today's video, Anua. Anua is a K-beauty brand that was actually so popular in Korea. I actually wanted to pick up some products while I was there before I committed to working with them for the sponsorship, but it was actually surprisingly difficult to get my hands on some of the products. A lot of the time, their best-selling products and value sets were completely sold out, and I had to visit multiple different Olive Young stores just to find them. In particular, I really wanted to pick up a value set which included their top bestseller, the TikTok Viral 77% Heart Leaf Soothing Toner, which also happens to be Olive Young's best-selling toner of 2022, and it's actually still the best-selling toner at Olive Young online, and it's an Amazon bestseller as well. This is a watery, super light and gentle toner with 77% Hortunia Cordata extract, which is great for preventing and reducing blemishes. I started testing it in the last week of my trip to Korea back in May, and I find it really soothing and is a great, gentle, non-irritating product, which really helps with congestion as well. So if you're interested in a brand that is really locally popular in Korea, then I highly recommend you check out Anua. Links are in the description box below, and a big thank you and smooch to them for sponsoring this video. Next up, you can tell this brand is popular too because again, they have a bunch of value sets on offer. Astura is a brand which reminds me a lot of La Roche-Posay in that a lot of their focus seems to be on gentle hydration. I've personally only tried one product from them so far, being their Atto Barrier 365 Hydro Soothing Cream, and it's a no-fuss, lightweight gel texture. I would say it's on the higher end of the price range for Korean skincare brands in Olive Young, but I wanted to mention it because I've seen it getting a little bit more popular. I was also pleased to see another brand I enjoy numbers in with a full display, including their new packaging. Just as a general recommendation or rule, if you do find yourself in an Olive Young and you're not sure what to choose, if it's in a box value set or in like a jumbo size, like this number three skin softening serum, then it's probably a good bet. I've tried quite a few products from the numbers in range and actually I highly recommend it for kind of how they work with makeup. If you like wearing makeup, complexion makeup, I feel like the finish they give is just really nice for pre-makeup skin prep. Now this brand, Isoy, has a very locally popular cult product, which is this rose-based serum, which I actually did pick up before the end of the trip, but I haven't tried it yet. Please let me know if you have tried it and how you found it because I'm very keen to see how it's gonna go. I also saw Laneige, which is super famous. I'm sure some of you are familiar with them. Big fan of their cream skin toner. Also love the vanilla lip mask. And I also saw Goodall, who are famous for their gentle vitamin C range. And uh, I actually had a little bit of an incident with a particular form of vitamin C last year, but my skin didn't actually have any issues with the Goodall one, and it's definitely their star range. Then apart from individual brand gondolas, Olive Young also have these more condensed aisles that are product category specific. So this section here was entirely devoted to cleansing balms and cleansing oils. And this section here was all about toner pads, which is a product category that I feel like is super hot in Korea when I visited. And that's interesting because I don't think it's as popular of a category overseas. And of course there was a huge sheet mask section. I was genuinely overwhelmed with the choice of sheet masks on offer. I tried a few while I was in Korea and I did find myself gravitating towards the ones that were on special. The sponsored segment of this video is well and truly over, but I was interested to try out a few more products from the sponsor than the ones I'd already tested. And they did also happen to be on sale. So I did try a couple of the Anua sheet masks and I thought they were quite lovely. Then they had a huge sunscreen section. To be honest, every section in Olive Young was kind of huge, but yes, a lot of sunscreens on display. When I was there, this sunscreen from Round Lab was really popular and I ended up bringing it back as a souvenir for my little brother because I'm a sun conscious skincare sister. <laughs> it is a chemical sunscreen. It's very quick absorbing into my hand and it's a bestseller. Also quick note, I'm mainly focusing on K-beauty brands, but they did have quite a few Western brands too. Then moving on to makeup, again, huge range, but I wanted to highlight Clinique because while it's a Western brand, a lot of brands have extended or exclusive shades in different markets. In particular, Clinique's Blush Pop product is super popular and it was pretty common to see some of the shades completely sold out. Like skincare, they also had an aisle that was focused on cushions and foundations. If you want my recommendation, I actually have had really great experiences with the Espoir range. 
Their formulas are just really nice quality and I find their shade range is just a little bit more expansive than your typical three shades you'd find in K-Beauty. Also, interestingly, fun fact, these displays often don't actually have all of the shades available in a product. I actually was looking to purchase my shade in a cushion, but then I realized it actually may be an online exclusive because I couldn't find it in store to test, but I could see it on the Olive Young website slash app. Just something to note if you're visiting Korea and shopping in person. Then we have Romand, which is one of my favorite cream makeup brands. Ugh, I just... They rarely miss, you know? Just a brand full of bangers. Like genuinely really enjoy their eyeshadows, blushes, mascaras, eyeliners, lip products. And they're definitely more of an affordable brand too. Like I'm not trying to be like a simp, but you know. <laughs> Roman's founder is actually a personal color expert. So this brand I feel definitely popularized that personal color concept within K-Beauty. I feel like they were one of the first brands to really push it as part of their marketing. And as a consumer, knowing that you're buying a lip color that is designed to suit you best is definitely an enticing prospect. So I've already bought Bought quite a few products from them online, but it was really nice to swatch some of the lip colors in person. In particular, the new Glasting lip balms were just so shiny and pretty. I definitely picked one of those up, but also if you are looking for lip products at all, the Juicy Lasting Tint range is so expensive. Huge recommend from me. I'm a lip product girly and it is the lip formula that I by far have the most shades of. Also here, apparently, I just wanted to show you some other products that I like, including the mascaras, which come in multiple colors. So like a black, but also brown and gray. The all flat brow pencil, the lip gloss, which is such a pretty finish, but not super long lasting. And their zero matte lipstick, which I am not a matte girly, but that formula is chef kiss. Also their cushions I've quite liked too. <laughs> there were also some other trendy brands I was super excited to see in person, such as Lily by Red, who have super cute packaging. They have a keyboard themed eyeshadow palette, which is very aesthetic, very pleasing to look at. And they also have these heart shaped cheek products, which by the way, the cream ones are very nice. Then we also have 3CE, which is a long time cult favorite. I would especially recommend them to warm toned peeps. I would say the vast majority of their range is warm toned but they also make my favorite eye glitter, which is this one. It's like iridescent glittery goodness. I can't even explain. There's also a newer brand called Laka and they have a lot of gender inclusive marketing and again, some really cool packaging and very unique shades across the range. They're definitely one I'm keeping my little rat girl eyes on and exploring more of because they seem pretty funky. Another newer brand that seemed to be very trendy was Dasique. They have a huge focus on aesthetic packaging. I feel like that's very much the vibe, the focus. But again, they're also tying in that concept of personal color into their range of shades. In particular, I feel like the blush palettes were very popular. They were sold out at multiple locations. And I low key regret not picking up the strawberry one that they just released because I thought it looked really cute. And by the time I left, I couldn't find any in stores. Like I thought I could wait a few days, but apparently not. Also this eyeshadow palette with all the split pans, just, ugh, it's so cute to look at. So they normally do the like square pan ones, but they also had these round pan ones, which are part of a limited edition ice cream collection, which they actually had a pop-up shop in Songsu, which is an area in Seoul while I was there, but I missed it because I'm a little numpty head. But anyway, if you're into like pastel kind of vibes, I feel like this is definitely a brand to look at. Another iconic K-beauty brand is Peripera. They often release quite trendy and affordable products and they are most famous for their lip tints. I'm sure you've probably seen one before. And it's pretty cool because I've been into K-beauty for like a really long time now. And Peripera are a brand that have been popular and I feel like they've stayed popular. Like they constantly reinvent themselves and their range just to keep up with like the makeup meta, if you will. Surprise, this is actually a Japanese brand. Most well-known for their mascaras, it is Heroin Make and they're actually using K-pop idol Somi as their ambassador here, which is cool. Another road shop brand is Too Cool For School, which Soyeon from G Idol is their current ambassador. They have their art class cushion, which I actually really like, but you are probably most familiar with or may have seen their super famous three-toned contour palette. They originally just had the one shape, but they've recently made a few new colors to cover a wider range of undertones. Ooh, okay, I'm actually interested to hear how many of you are aware of Wake Make. It's a brand that seemed to be super popular in Korea, but I feel like it's still not as popular globally. They had such beautiful eyeshadow palettes and I did end up grabbing one of. Uh, I haven't used it yet though. I haven't tried anything else from them before. So fingers crossed I like it. But yeah, definitely a brand that felt very like popular locally. Another K-beauty veteran brand is Clio, who are actually the big sister brand to Peripera. Like they're under the same brand umbrella. Their new eyeshadow palettes have been, you know, quite popular. They've done some cute like cat and dog themed collections, but I think Clio just does eyeliner and mascara so well. In particular, the Sharp So Simple Eyeline is one of my favorite formulas. It's so soft and creamy and pigmented, but it doesn't budge. Love that one, do want it in more colors. So this is Amuse and they were another brand that were having a bit of a moment. They're a vegan brand rep by our queen, Sulgi from Red Velvet. 
And their lip tints were often very hyped up and often sold out and they often didn't have testers either. So it was actually nice to try them in person because I had looked and a lot of stores, like they just, the testers were empty or they just didn't have any at all. Although I didn't actually end up picking one up, which I kind of regret, but not really because the colors didn't really speak to me. Now I mentioned Espoir before when we were looking at the base kind of aisle, but they also do have a full separate dedicated gondola in this Olive Young. So here is that. So you can just see the full range of their products. I mainly try their base stuff and I like some of their lip stuff, but I am keen to explore further because so far so good. They did also have a bunch of makeup and beauty tools, including the famous Picasso makeup spatula, which I did pick up and I'm still trying to get the hang of it, but maybe we can test it out together. Also, there was like a whole hair section, but it's not really my area of expertise. Let me know if you'd like me to explore that more and we can totally talk about K-Beauty hair. Across the store, there were these stands or hotspots featuring these value sets. And those tend to be, again, these best-selling products bundled with extras. For example, the aforementioned Round Lab sunscreen again was there. The I'm From Honey mask that some of you may know I'm a big fan of. Very yummy, good for the, the honey heads out there. <laughs> not that I eat it. Anyway, the Cosrx Snail Cream, which I know is super popular popular internationally, so probably highlighted for the tourists. As this was the Hongdae Olive Young, so a little bit more of like a touristy slash student area. And as I mentioned earlier, Olive Young also sell a bunch of other beauty and wellness related products, including these kombucha powders, which were on sale. And I did purchase out of curiosity. Also because I'm a little kombucha sculling scallywag. There were also these adorable My Melody branded random supplements, which I was tempted by for the packaging, but ultimately skipped. Also, every Olive Young I went to tended to have a range of drinks and snacks too, ranging from more like wellness stuff to just like delicious little treats, which like, yes, this is a store for the girlies. This is what I want in a retail experience. There were a few times on the trip where I would go into the Olive Young just to get a little drink or a snack. It was, it's just delightful. In particular, this brand of snacks was very popular and I have since fallen in love with these protein cake chips. They're everything. And I'm even considering placing an online international order just to stock up because they're just so delish. But yeah, they had like a little drinks free and even like champagne, liquor, wine selection, which is a bit slay. Like going into Olive Young and getting your chic mask and then some boutique makgeolli, iconic in my opinion. And with that, that was a super condensed tour around Olive Young. Honestly, I could stand in one of those stores for literal hours and I did do that. I'm going to link Olive Young's global online store below and try and list out all the brands and products I talked about. As always, thank you so, so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.